Hello and welcome to the Yogscast Guide to the Conclave of Wind. In this fight, you're taking on three genies that surround Alakir's platform. You need to split your raid up between the three platforms and ensure that someone is on each platform all the time. So initially, you need to put two ranged DPS and one healer on the east platform, standing here. You need to put one tank and one healer on the north platform and you need to put everyone else, one tank, one healer, three DPS, on the west platform. Each of the genies has unique abilities, but we're just going to jump straight into the fight. I'm starting on the west platform, and I'm tanking the boss. The west boss is Anshal, and he throws down healing circles on the ground that you need to drag him out of. In addition, he will spawn adds. These are little flowers, and they do an AoE stacking dot, so they do need to be killed quickly, uh, it's not necessarily best to just pick them all up together and AoE them down, as he will plonk a healing circle down on one of them randomly. So you need to be a little bit careful. It's okay if they're a little bit loose and you do a little bit of single target DPS to kill them. The bosses share an energy bar that ticks up to 90. When they reach 90, they will each cast an ultimate ability. The important thing is that people switch platforms at around 80 energy. This is the perfect time. The tank and healer from Anshal and all the DPS on the platform need to go to the top platform and the DPS on the other platform, which we haven't got to yet, will also jump over to the north platform at this point. At the same time, the tank and healer from the north platform need to jump back to the west platform. So just before the first ultimate ability, you have the original tank and healer from the north platform on the west platform and there is still the healer on his own on the east platform. The reason that everyone jumps over to the north platform is that the north genie's ultimate ability is the most dangerous and does a lot of damage. However, it is soaked between people on his platform. So you need to get every spare person onto his platform during his ultimate ability. Once the ultimate ability is over and your DPS have hit him a little bit to get him roughly equal on life to the guy on the west platform, all of your DPS can jump back to their associated platforms again. Now as you can see, I'm tanking on the north platform, tanking Nezir. He has two abilities you need to watch out for. He has a frontal breath, and he had plonks down these frost patches that damage people who stand in them. He will plonk the frost patches down beneath people, so you need to make sure that you're spread out or moving around to avoid standing in these. The reason that you have to switch over tanks is because he has this stacking frost debuff which makes it worse and worse to stand on the platform. So again we're watching the energy bars tick up and at 80 we're going to do another tank switch and everyone's going to jump to the north platform again. So the DPS and the tank will jump to the north, the DPS from the east will jump to the north and the tank healer group that are on the north will go to the west. This is a fairly straightforward strategy, and it should be fairly easy to execute. So once he comes out of his ultimate ability, it starts again. Now we're going to have a look at what people need to do if they're standing on the east platform. Now over on the east platform, this guy blows whirlwinds around the middle of him, and can't really be very easily melee tanked or hit by melee DPS. This boss has one ability that you really need to watch out for if you're on this platform. It's a thing called wind blast and it's basically a wall of wind kind of like an eye beam that he will blow clockwise around his platform if you get hit by it you'll be knocked off the platform and take enormous damage and it's really really bad he will point towards the direction he's going to cast it so you do have plenty of time to react but if you're unlucky you can get caught in it and knocked off the other thing that you need to know about this is that when the DPS jump off the platform to go to the north platform and soak, the healer that's left behind will suffer from the ultimate ability, which is to knock you right up in the air and then take quite a lot of falling damage. Uh, if your healer isn't a priest or have s some sort of slow fall buff available, a mage will need to be on the platform to cast slow fall on him to ensure that he doesn't die. With this setup, you should be f DPSing the bosses down fairly evenly. However, if DPS is too high, and it's likely to be too high on the east one, if anything, 
you can send one of your DPS from that platform over to the west platform during second or third ultimate phase. Popping heroism late is a very good idea because they need to die within one minute of each other. You've got to make sure that you kill the one on the west first because he can heal up sometimes and it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to catch up with damage. So make sure the one on the west dies first and if the other two are around 10% you can easily jump platform, kill one, jump platform, kill the other. I mean it's not a complicated strategy, it's just a little strange, isn't it? That's the issue. Yeah. So, I mean, people might, it might be very unfamiliar to people, this whole, you know, moving around business and going from boss to boss. One thing you should definitely take note of is that um, you shouldn't ever jump off the platforms. These sort of blowy wind, pa I've got a blocked up nose, can you hear? Yeah. These blowy wind passages, you, s you sort of have to stand on them rather than jump off. They just should just blow you over. They, it's not... It's not like... Genies uh, are famous for giving you three wishes, aren't they? Like, you free a genie, and he says, Okay, I'll give you three wishes. But... I mean, what happened to the guy who freed these three guys? Did he have nine wishes, and was it worth it? I don't know, but that's a good point, Simon, because the loot from these bosses is, like, uh, randomly itemised. So it's kind of odd loot um, and it looks sort of crap because it's all white text you know you know those loot that have like hit rating in white text it's kind of just it looks a bit odd mm, yeah um, so it's like a green that you just get randomly dropping only it's an epic quality an epic quality green red ridge gloves of the, the whale yeah or something of the whale <laughs> Oh god, it's a bit like the optional spidery boss in the basement of Karazhan, isn't it? Yeah. Because he drops oh, random yeah. stat loot, which was terrible and the reason why people didn't do the fight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's good to see Blizzard are learning. I think we've had uh, three plate belts so far, each of them itemised very poorly. Of the whale. <laughs> <laughs> of the owl. did mention in yeah. a previous video that... Um, it's a good job that in the lost city of the Tolvir, the Lord of the Southwind has been captured, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to raid the uh, Enclave of Wind. Because as soon as you enter the raid, you're on the platform of the Southwind guy. Yeah. And if he was there, he would just start attacking you. You just get... Well, they do have a very small aggro radius there, don't they? Because you accidentally jumped. I like... don't think they have one. I think you just have to attack them because I've I've literally been on top of one of them before and didn't aggro him. Mm. If you if you mount up and you jump on your mount as you take the little gust of wind when you yeah. jump off the platform, you can just fly straight through the boss. Um, yeah, I took go great off. pleasure in doing this at every, every possible opportunity. I'm freaking out the whole raid, yeah. Cause for some reason you can mount up, because you're, you're like outside. But you can't use flying mounts, which probably would make the whole thing a bit easier, surely. <laughs> I mean, you're in... This is, this is sort of... It's like the elemental plane of air sort of encroaching on Azeroth. And yet you can't fly. Okay, well thank you. I think this, this strategy... Because it could be worse. It could be the three bosses flying around. Oh god. And we have to fight that them on like worse. griffins with the wild hammer dwarves throwing hammers. Oh. <laughs> Quick, use the hammer shield thing! <laughs> oh god, okay. <laughs> if you want some perps from me, baby, there's a price to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a genie on a platform. You gotta kill me the right way. Amazing. There That's we go. The video done.